Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and today we're diving into a fascinating 2017 study that looks at a really important question when trying to interpret muscle growth in response to resistance training. Now, when you first start lifting weights, are those early changes in muscle size measured as real growth or is it just acute swelling? Also, when you interpret a study that looks at muscle growth in response to various resistance training methods, are these increases in muscle size actually growth or are they just swelling? So to answer these questions, let's take a closer look at this paper, which is titled Differential Swelling in Hypertrophy Through Indirect Assessment of Muscle Damage in Untrained Men Following Repeated Bouts of Resistance Exercise. Now, this study was by Buckner and colleagues, and it was published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology. So here's the rationale. When someone starts a new resistance training program, especially if they've never lifted before, it's common to see increases in muscle size within the first week or two. But some researchers have argued that those early gains might not be true hypertrophy, that is actual growth of the muscle fibers themselves. Instead, this might just be swelling, which is a temporary increase in muscle size caused by inflammation, fluid retention, and muscle damage from the resistance training itself. This is often referred to as edema, and it can make the muscle look and feel bigger without representing actual tissue growth. So naturally, there has been a lot of debate in the research world about this over the last few years. In fact, in 2016 and 2017, the discussion was more so focused on how early we were actually able to measure the presence of muscle growth. Basically, what I mean by this is when Buckner and colleagues published their study in 2018, they were more so focused on determining if muscle growth could be measured as early as three weeks into a resistance training program, or are increases in muscle size around those three weeks conflated by the presence of swelling? For example, some studies have observed what they believe to be muscle growth after just one or two weeks of training. Others, however, may argue that those changes are largely swelling and that real hypertrophy doesn't kick in or at least become measurable until week three or four of a training program. So the challenge is with common measurement tools like ultrasound or MRI, it's hard to tell the differences between swelling and true muscle growth. Both of these can lead to increased muscle thickness and cross-sectional area. So this group of researchers set out to ask two key questions. Does early swelling from lifting weights plateau after a few workouts or does it keep building? And can a muscle that's already swollen swell even more after another workout? To find this out, the researchers followed a group of untrained men over the course of several resistance training sessions, measuring muscle size, their strength and muscle soreness while trying to tease apart what was swelling and what was muscle growth. So let's take a look at exactly how they did it. To answer their questions, the researchers designed small but very detailed experiments, both using non-resistance trained young men defined as males who hadn't lifted weights in the past six months. Essentially, they wanted to track how their muscles responded to lifting weights over a short period of time, especially in those crucial first few training sessions back. So let's break it down. They recruited nine males with an average age of around 24 years. Now, these participants didn't smoke, they had a normal body weight, and they weren't doing any formal exercise. That way, the researchers could observe a true newbie response to resistance training. Each participant trained only one arm, either their right or their left, chosen at random. The other arm was used as a control and did not do any lifting. The full training protocol lasted just nine days with eight lab visits in a row, plus one introductory session. So here's what happened. On visit one, the participants got familiar with the equipment and did a one rep max test for the biceps. Then over the next eight days, participants came in daily either for exercise or for measurements. So on visits two, four, six, and nine, participants did four sets of bicep curls at 70% of their one rep max. Each set was taken to failure with 60 seconds of rest between sets. All lifts were done slowly with good form using a metronome to keep a steady tempo. Now on non-lifting visits, which were visits three, five, seven, and eight, the participants just had their muscle measurements taken. So there was no training performed on those visits. These visits served to track the time course of any changes in muscle size. 
Now the researchers tracked three primary variables in both the exercise and non-exercise arm to better understand the time course of swelling and muscle damage. So muscle thickness was measured via ultrasound to detect the changes in muscle size from both swelling and possible growth. Isometric strength was measured using a dynamometer to track force output. And lastly, muscle soreness was assessed using a pain scale after lightly stretching the arm. Now let's talk about experiment two. This part of the study was especially creative. So by this point, which is day nine, the participants had already completed three workouts over the course of a week. And remember they lifted on days two, four, and six. So at this point, their muscles were likely swollen from the repeated exercise. So the question now was, can a muscle that's already swollen swell even more after another workout? This idea came from an observation the researchers made in previous studies, where there seemed to be a limit to how much muscle can swell in response to training. So they designed this part of the study to test that directly. Here's what they did. First, before completing the training, the researchers measured the participants' muscle thickness, also their strength and soreness, to establish a baseline. The participant completed the usual workout, so four sets of bicep curls at 70% of their one rep max, also taken to failure. And then after that first bout, the researchers measured the muscle thickness again at 0, 5, 15, and 30 minutes post exercise. So at that point, they had a clear snapshot of the muscle's initial day nine swelling response. But then right after that 30 minute mark, the participants did the same workout again. And once more, muscle thickness was measured using the same intervals after that second bout, immediately and every few minutes thereafter. The big question that we're all waiting on, if the muscle was already swollen, could it swell more from a second workout just 30 minutes later? So let's take a look at the results. What did they find? Well, looking at experiment one, the authors found that muscle thickness measured by ultrasound increased after every workout. And that's consistent with what we'd expect from acute swelling, which is a temporary shift into the target muscle immediately after training. But here's what's interesting. Between those workouts, even after a full day of rest, muscle thickness didn't return to the original baseline. It stayed slightly elevated by about 0.2 to 0.4 of a centimeter, depending on the site measured. The authors speculated that after that first exposure to resistance exercise, the muscle develops like a new baseline level of swelling, which doesn't keep increasing with each workout. In other words, the swelling plateaus fairly early on. Now, when it comes to muscle strength, which was measured as isometric torque, this was reduced after the first workout and stayed lower throughout the week. And that's a classic sign of muscle damage. But towards the end of the study, strength actually began to recover, showing that the muscle was starting to adapt. Now, muscle soreness peaked at around day five and it dropped back near to baseline again by day eight. Again, typical of early resistance training, the worst soreness happens after the first few sessions and then it gets better as the body starts to adapt. Now for the double workout on day nine. So after the first exercise bout, muscle thickness increased immediately, just like before. But here's the key. The second workout did not cause any additional swelling. In other words, if the muscle was already swollen, it couldn't swell anymore, even with another full workout. At every site measured, so 50, 60, and 70% of the upper arm, the swelling response plateaued after the first bout, even though participants still did a full second session. So what does this data mean for you and I? Well, number one, early changes in muscle size is mostly swelling, not muscle growth. So when you start lifting, your muscles may look and feel better in the first few weeks, but that's not necessarily muscle growth. It's mostly just fluid retention and inflammation around the worked muscle, a temporary swelling response caused by the muscle damage of training. And this explains why changes in muscle thickness happen so fast, sometimes after just one or two training sessions. It's also one of the reasons why we often see our body weight increase in response to a new resistance training program. Number two, swelling plateaus quickly. So that swelling seems to hit a bit of a ceiling. So after the first few sessions, the muscle doesn't continue to swell more with each workout. And that pumped feeling and its appearance doesn't build endlessly. It starts to stabilize. 
So this means that any additional changes in size after that point are more likely to be true hypertrophy, actual structural changes in the muscle fibers themselves. And this might mean that swelling is not the primary culprit when interpreting most resistance training studies. Number three, a swollen muscle doesn't swell more. In experiment two, doing a second workout on an already swollen muscle didn't increase thickness any further. So once that acute response happens, doing more doesn't amplify it. This gives us potentially a new way to differentiate between swelling and growth in training studies, although it hasn't been commonly employed in the literature. So what are my main takeaways? Well, this study gives us a clearer picture of what's really happening during the early weeks of resistance training, especially for beginners. Yes, your muscles might look bigger after a few workouts, but the initial change, well, that's mostly just swelling and not actual muscle fiber growth. And that swelling response, well, it appears to max out pretty quickly and it doesn't continue building with more training. So this means if you're starting a workout program and you see your arm or your leg size jump up in the first week, that's your body responding to the stress and damage caused by the bout of exercise. It's not building new tissue just yet. True hypertrophy takes time. It begins after the inflammation settles and your body starts adapting to the stimulus. Be patient, trust the process, and don't confuse the pump with permanent progress. So this study doesn't just help us understand muscle science, it gives us all a better perspective on what to expect when we train. Early muscle size gains are not hypertrophy. In untrained individuals, muscle thickness increases quickly after the first few workouts, increasing muscle thickness by a measure of 0.2 to 0.4 centimeters. But this is primarily due to swelling and not true muscle growth. Swelling also plateaus quickly. After just a few bouts of resistance exercise, muscle swelling stabilizes, but it doesn't keep increasing with continued training. Swollen muscles don't swell more. Once a muscle is already swollen, even a second workout on the same day, 30 minutes later, doesn't produce additional swelling. There's likely a ceiling to that acute swelling response. And lastly, this means that swelling and hypertrophy can be separated over time. This study suggests that once the early swelling settles, any further increases in muscle size are more likely to reflect real hypertrophy actual muscle fiber growth. So thank you so much for watching folks. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. And if you still have questions about muscle swelling in response to resistance training, then feel free to leave me a question in the comment section below. Now, if you're looking to track your workout progress, not the pump, then check out Be A Fit Workout app. BeaFit offers hundreds of workout programs with a variety of options available for all goals and experience levels. It allows you to monitor and track your volume and strength over time, track your workouts, your body weight and other helpful training metrics, and just make sense of your training with real science-based features and training tools. It's built with evidence-based insights just like those in this video. So if you'd like to find out more, visit my website linked in the description or download Be A Fit on Android or iOS. Thank you so much for watching today's video and don't forget to like, subscribe to my channel and share this video with your buddy and I'll see you in my next video.